the body weight of male students in Özyel University is normally distributed with 78 kilograms mean and 25 kilograms square variance. Now here is the interesting thing here. In this question, this time we are talk talking about a normally distributed random variable. However, this time the question does not use the terms of location parameter and scale parameter. Instead, it says the Male students, the male students in Özyen University, they have body weights with an average of 78 kilograms. So 78 kilograms is the average of the weights of male students in Özyen University. And there is a variance of 25 kilograms square. So instead, the parameters are given. The question gives us the variance and the mean values of this distribution. Okay. Now. From this sentence, we need to understand that if we randomly select a student from these male students, that weight is going to be normally distributed with location parameters 78 and scale parameter equal to 5. Why? Because the variance is equal to 25 means the scale parameter is equal to 5. Remember, the variance is equal to sigma square. This means scale parameter must be equal to 5. So please very, be very careful about this. Arkadaşlar geçen hafta sizinle beraber simülasyon sınavı yaptım diğer sınıfta. Simülasyon sınavında arkadaşlar bununla ilgili bir soru vardı ve öğrencilerin yarısından fazlası daha varyansın sigmanın karesi olduğunu bilmeden sigma eşittir 25 gibi yazıyorlar. Yani varyans 25 ya sigmaya 25 yazıyor. Bakın. Bu çok büyük bir hata. Bir endüstri mühendisi öğrencisi mezuniyet aşaması geldiğinde daha bunun bile farkında değilse o diploma yalandır. Kusura bakmayın arkadaşlar. Tamam. Endüstri mühendisliği arkadaşlar olasılık teorisi ve istatistik disiplininin iyi bilinmesi gereken bir disiplin. İyi anlaşılması gereken bir disiplin. Diğer mühendislik disiplinlerinde bu kadar önemli değil bizimki kadar. Bizde çok daha önemli. Yine aynı şekilde veri bilimiyle ilgilenen disiplinlerde de çok önemli olasılık teorisi ve istatistik. Ve daha normal dağılımda sigma değerinin varyansın kare kökü olması gerektiğini bilmiyorsa bir öğrenci bence eğitim hayatı koca bir yalan üzerine kurulu demektir diye düşünüyorum. Tabi bu hani şey demek değil hani bir tane hatayla bir tane hatayla. Olabilir bu dikkatsizlik olabilir, heyecan olabilir. Bu ihtimalleri de göz önüne alalım. Ama e, ısrarlı bir şekilde daha bunun farkında bile değilse öğrenci. O zaman işte bence çok da şey değildir yani. Gerçek anlamda bir mühendis değildir. Eğitim iyi alamamış demektir. Şimdi devam edelim. So we randomly select a student here. Which is, which is a weight, which is a weight, which is normally distributed around. 78 kilograms mean, the location parameter, and the sigma value is 5. And what is the probability of a randomly selected male student to weigh less than 69.75 kilograms? Now, after introducing my random variable here, the question is asking this. So, what is the probability of a randomly selected student's weight to be less than or equal to 69.75 kilograms, it says. Now, how do you calculate this probability? By standardization. Again, standardize by subtracting mu and dividing to sigma. Now, if you have an incorrect sigma here, you are going to do mistakes here. If you divide to 25 here, then the result is going to be wrong. So you need to be careful in defining sigma. Sigma is the square root of the variance. And the probability of z being less than or equal to minus 1.65 can be obtained from the CDF table by subtracting the CDF at 1.65 from 1. And the CDF at 1.65 is 0 0.9505. And the second part of the question, what kilogram value is exceeded by only 5% of the male students? What kilogram value is exceeded by only 5% of the male students? So here's the thing, the student's weight distribution, the student's weight distribution has the location parameter 78 and scale parameter 5. We are looking for a threshold value x for which 
the area on the left hand side is going to be only 5%. Okay, so that's it. This means the probability of a randomly selected student's weight to be less than or equal to that x value must be equal to 0 0.95. And first we standardize and say that the standard normal CDF at x minus 78 over 5 must be equal to 0 0.95. And for 0 0.95, we need to identify the critical x value, which is somewhere between 1.64 and 1.65. And approximately, we can say that it is just in the middle because 0 0.95 is just in the middle here. We can say that it is equal to 1.645. And 1.645 must be equal to x minus 78 over 5. And the x value here is 86.225. So this x value is 86.225. Only 5% of the male students have a larger weight than this. Okay, now my friends, before completing this chapter, I do not want to give any break right now. I'm going to give it 10 minutes break later, but I need to complete this chapter as I have told you. Now, let's just say we have a normal random variable with location parameter mu and scale parameter sigma or mathematical representation of it x is normally distributed and stands for normal with location parameter mu and scale parameter sigma. Now mu here, the location parameter, is also called the mean of the normal distribution or the mean of this random variable. The expected value, the mean, the average, the average of this normal distribution is mu, okay? And it determines the location of the distribution if you remember. Sigma is called the standard deviation. Sigma is called the standard deviation of the normal distribution. Now, this is a new concept that you learn. My friends, standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So what is standard deviation? It is basically the square root of the variance. There is only a definition to that. Standard deviation is the square root of the variance. And sigma is the standard deviation of the normal distribution, and it determines how the potential values the, these random variables can be dispersed over the real line. So it is a measure of dispersion. And sigma square is called the variance of the normal distribution. Now you know the variance is simply square of the standard deviation. Okay? However, these two terms, both sigma square and sigma, or both standard deviation and variance, they have important uh, properties related to statistical studies, okay? These two concepts, they are both essential, even though one of them is simply the square root of the other one and the other one is square of the other one. They are both important concepts in statistical studies. So you need to know the term standard deviation, which is the square root of the variance. So we can simply write it like that if you like. The standard deviation of a random variable is equal to the square root of the variance of that random variable. Okay, so you need to learn these things right now, the thing right now, the definition of the standard deviation. And for normal random variable, sigma will be standard deviation and sigma square will be variance. Now, let me give you further more information, and uh, these are not very important actually. Uh, because you can always find these values from the CDF table. In any normal distribution, in any normal distribution, the probability that this normal random variable to take a value at most one standard deviation far from location parameter will always be equal to 0 0.6827. Ortalama değerden bir standart sapma uzakta olma olasılığı 0.6827'dir. Herhangi bir normal dağılımda bu böyledir. In any normal distribution, to stay 1.96 sigma far from the location parameter will always be equal to 0 0.95. Ortalamadan 1.96 standart sapma uzaklıkta olma olasılığı her zaman %95'tir arkadaşlar. Bu değeri unutmayın çünkü bunu çok kullanacaksınız. 1.96 bu önemli bir değer. Tamam 
Peki 1.96 değil de 2 sigma olursa bu olasılık ne oluyor? Yani ortalamadan artı eksi 2 sigma uzakta olursanız 0.9545 oluyor bu olasılık. Arkadaşlar belki fizik laboratuvarında belki lisedeki bir deneylerinizde, lise hayatınızdaki deneylerinizde bir deneyi yaptığınız zaman çeşitli sonuçlar elde ederdik. Bu sonuçların daha sonra ortalamasını ve standart sapmasını hesaplayıp ne yapardık? Ortalamadan artı eksi 2 sigma yapardık değil mi? Standart sapmasını artı eksi 2 ile çarpıp hem çıkarırdık hem toplardık. Hoca derdi ki buna yüzde 95 güven aralığı deniyor arkadaşlar derdi. İşte sebebi bu yüzde 95 güven aralığı denmesin. Aslında o sayı 2 değil. Aslında o sayı 1.96 ama hani lisede nasıl ilkokulda pi sayısını 3.14 dilde 3 alıyordunuz değil mi? Lisede de 1.96 olması gereken bu sayıyı 2 olarak aldınız siz hep. Ama aslında o sayı 1.96 olması gerekiyor. Ve ortalamadan from the location parameter, from the mean, the probability of being at most 2.58 sigma far from is 0.99. So with 0.99 probability you are only going to be at most 2.58 sigma far from location parameter. And finally... The probability of being three sigmas, three standard deviation far from, at, at most three standard deviation far from uh, the uh, location parameter, the mean of the distribution is 0.9973, which is very close to one if you see, but it is not one. So only with 3% probability, this normal random variable will be far from three sigmas. Arkadaşlar ancak binde 3 ihtimalle, binde 3'e yakın bir ihtimalle normal rastsal değişkenler 3 standart sapma uzakta değer alırlar. 3 standart sapmadan daha uzakta değer alırlar. Bu da çok düşük bir ihtimal. Yani baktığınız zaman hani normal rastsal değişkenler eksi sonsuzla artı sonsuz arasında herhangi bir değeri alabilir diyoruz ama 3 standart sapmadan daha yüksek ya da 3 standart sapmadan daha yüksek, düşük Ortalamadan 3 standart sapma yüksek ve düşük değerlerin arasında olma ihtimali zaten %99.7 civarında. Yani dışına çıkma ihtimali çok düşük. Ama gene de öyle bir ihtimal var. Ve arkadaşlar son olarak. This is the last point for this section. Now in this chapter we have covered, covered some special distributions, continuous random variables like continuous uniform random variable, exponential random variable. And the normal random variable here, okay, the normal random variable here. Now, obviously in literature, in literature, there is a huge vast list of continuous random variables, okay? I mean, we do not have enough time to cover all of them. And these are a little more complicated than the ones that we have learned in this course. We have emphasized the spatial ones like exponential and normal random variable we have spent enough time in all of them however in literature there are many other continuous random variables such as triangular log normal gamma erlang weibull beta t distributed chi distributed chi squared and f distributed random variables now some of these random variables the last three especially the last three of them t distributed chi squared and f distributed You are going to learn about them in the statistics course. Some of them, for example, Erlang, Gamma, Weibull, Log Normal, Beta, Triangular, you are going to learn about them in this simulation course. Okay? So that's the end for this chapter. This is the reading assignment again you are supposed to do. You are supposed to do this reading assignment as the end of this chapter.